you know, it's, it's unbelievable to me that anybody, let alone millions of people, view this man as a hero. This is a man who is like a sewer rat, sewage rat, is literally hiding, jumping from terror tunnel to terror tunnel after having stolen billions of dollars from his own people, right? It, it doesn't get more, more cowardly than him. And, um, you know, Israel obviously is, is going to eventually have to eliminate him. Uh, there's no question about that. It's not a question of it. It's a question of when. But just seeing that, how he takes his little children and, you know, is going, you know, from tunnel to tunnel. By the way, important to mention that Zimar had a lethal um, uh, brain tumor that Israel operated on and saved his life. I mean, you, you don't get more deranged and twisted than that man. And so Israel is going to take him out. The world will be that much safer. For now, let him run and, you know, from, from tunnel to tunnel. He can't hide. We know where he is. And the fact that he's surrounding himself by hostages, again, how cowardly can you get? Hero, this guy is the world's biggest coward. as this military operation continues, Israeli forces are looking at a potential offensive in Rafa. There are obviously a huge amount of Palestinians who have been moved to that area and the international community is amping up pressure on Israel to pause and take a moment before they go in. What's your response to that pressure and why are they wrong? It's a blatant display of double standard, right? I mean, Really? You're telling us after we just went in there and rescued two hostages that were being held, and I want to emphasize this, in a civilian's home, like literally in a family. Can you imagine your family abducting innocent people and keeping them for four months? It's up, like I said before, it's rotten to the core. And so the fact that we haven't even started and we already rescued two hostages from Rafa shows you what, you know, what, what Rafa is, and it's the last stronghold of Hamas, and everyone knows that. Hamas knows it. The world knows it. And so, you know, the fact that there's anyone pressuring Israel not to go in there is it's, it's pathetic. It's really pathetic. And, you know, you've know, you, you got to compare it to other wars, right? I mean, imagine, you know, co coming to the United States after 9-11 and saying, hey, you know, poor, you know, poor Afghans. You can't go into Afghanistan. You got, give me a break, right? Poor, poor Germans and Nazis. Come on. Like, wars are tragic. People die in wars and it's tragic. But Israel didn't want this war. Israel was forced into this war. And now Israel needs to do what it needs to do and should have done a long time ago. But, you know, I, I hope and pray that our government has you know, the courage to stand up to that that pressure because the, the, the fact that there's anyone pressuring Israel to not go in there is is just a, it's, it's completely morally bankrupt and twisted. This has been what has kind of happened all along during this military campaign. The criticism has come before the response. October the 7th, they're already chastising Israel for an action that they haven't begun yet and the same appears to be happening with regard to Rafa. Yeah, it's again, it's a display of, you know, I really hate calling it anti-Semitism. I don't like pulling that card, but there really is no logical explanation other than, you know, pure Jew hatred. I mean, how could you tell someone, meaning how could you tell a government or a country that experienced October 7th and the atrocities and the horrible tragedy and the darkest day in the history of Jewish people since the Holocaust? How do you have the audacity, whoever you are, whether you're European countries or Biden or anyone else, how do you have the audacity to come and pressure us not to achieve complete victory over Hamas when we know what Hamas is? It's not like they hide it. It's not like they're saying, oh, you know, we only hate Israel, we love America. What, you think West is not next? Of course the West is. They say it. And the irony of it all, the whole thing, the irony of the entire conflict is that the very same people who are saying, you know, the Palestinians, they don't mean it. Don't take them seriously. Don't hold them accountable. Are the very same people who are saying that the Palestinians deserve a state. Make up your mind. Are they an actual nation and a people that deserve a state? If so, they need to be held accountable for their words and actions, a.k.a. their support of terror. 
And if they're not a people, they're just a bunch of little kids, you know, throwing a tantrum, then who's going to give a, a kid throwing a tantrum a state? So, you know, like make up your mind. And that's just one example of hundreds of examples of just blatant hypocrisy and double standards as it you know, pertains to this war and the conflict in general. What is more disappointing in terms of this response? Is it the masses of idiots on the street who have never been to the region who say they're pro Hamas or pro Houthi or whatever it happens to be? Or is it more upsetting where you think, well, this guy is clearly been highly educated, whether he is hard left or, or or whatever, is it more disappointing from an intellectual anti-Semitic standpoint? I think option C is the answer. Option C is otherwise moral people, intelligent, moral people. Many examples, I'm not going to name names, but just to give you one example without naming a name, is one of the top investors in Silicon Valley, very widely regarded as one of the top investors in the world, blatant anti-Semite, I mean, tweeting things like Israel's you know, I, don't even, I can't even repeat the things that he said. It's just, it's horrible. And so how do you, a moral person, kisses your mother with that mouth? Let those words out of your mouth, right? And so, yeah, it's, it's pathetic to see the indoctrination of Gen Zers. It's pathetic to see the indoctrination of academia. And it's pathetic to see otherwise moral people go completely immoral when it comes to the Jews. How could a person with, a, again, a person with morality, with any sort of moral compass, how on earth is there ever a scenario, I don't care what scenario, in which you justify beheading babies like have you lost your mind so that's the reality we live in and it's not something we would ever see uh you know if, if it wasn't jews on the receiving end it's, it's it's tragic but it's not new in terms of that the radicalization that is required how does that work once hamas are wiped off the face of the earth and that's a million dollar question right what happens the day after well first of all the day after israel is going to have to you know go through our own process because this entire country is in deep trauma. Uh, so we're gonna have to handle that. But as far as Gaza is concerned, there there has to be a complete and utter dis denoxification of Gaza. Nothing less than that. You cannot, you know, expect a victory unless you deal with the fact that these children are being indoctrinated from age zero to kill Jews, right? We we see this, we see 14, 13, 12 year old kids going and picking up guns and neither trying to murder Jews. Like what what kind of warped society promotes that. And so getting rid of Hamas will not, you know, do anything in terms of a long-term solution unless we deal with the reality on the ground, which is that the Palestinian Authority and radical Islam in general is indoctrinating their next generation to be, you know, Hamas 2.0. So that needs to be dealt with. Killing Hamas or destroying Hamas is not going to be enough. Beyond the atrocities of October the 7th themselves, how upset and agitated, irritated, disappointed are you in some of the commentary and coverage on what has happened since in terms of how Israel and the IDF's military campaign in Gaza has been explained? You know, on the one hand, on October 8th, the day after that horrible day, I kind of was looking for some silver lining. And I told myself, at least now the world will clearly stand with Israel. I mean, there's no scenario in which they live streamed the atrocities and the world denies it. That obviously can't happen. And yet here we are, you know, a few months later. It didn't take very long. And so on the one hand, it's, it's you know, very disappointing. On the other hand, it's not surprising. We see, you know, the double standard and the hypocrisy and the blatant anti-Semitism throughout our history. I and mean, this is not a new phenomenon. Uh, you know, maybe it's a little bit more extreme with that the fact, again, that they live streamed it and how do you deny something that you see before your eyes? Um, but the reality is the the level of hypocrisy and just absurdity is, is staggering. I mean, the complete, you know, uh, ignorance and lack of care about the actual truth, like real facts, uh, you know, anything from, you know, the occupation, which, you know, Israel evacuated Gaza in 2005. What occupation? Like, you know, there's no... There's no need for facts, and, and truth is no longer a virtue when it comes to Israel. It's it's, it's really unbelievable to watch. Um, but you know, I we have to kind of stick to the truth and and do our do our best to help you know spread the fact that the people, or I should say, the organization that we're fighting, Hamas, um, is really the forces of evil. Obviously, with Iran fund, funding them and all of the the different fancy names for the same radical Islamic terrorists, you know, Hezbollah and Hamas and ISIS, it's all the same stuff. Uh, you know, they are the forces of darkness in this world. And putting aside the, let's call it, Jew hatred or the bias against Israel and the Jewish people, it's objectively 
a fact to say that the Jewish people have brought light to this world, whether it's, you know, the Nobel Prizes or, you know, cutting edge technology that, that that's curing cancer and other things. So the way I see it, this is the forces of light versus the forces of darkness. And it's really a clash of civilization, right? It's the the, the world of radical Islam against the, the, the civilized Western world. And so, you know, the fact that there's, you know, there, there, there are people marching in the streets and democratic countries uh, or, or, or queers for Palestine, you know, I don't know whether to laugh or cry. It's it's absurd on a different level. So it is disappointing, but it's not surprising. It's also not surprising then that the allegations that have been made against UNRWA, for example, have been so shocking. You know, I, I know that you have to say allegations. I don't. I mean, we, we know the facts. So there's no, there's no, there's no debating it at this point. I mean, you know, under, un, under their headquarters, like you can't make this stuff up under UNRWA headquarters. A multi-million dollar terror tunnel that it literally, literally takes the electricity from UNRWA headquarters, and yet they deny that they knew. I mean, like, you know, you, you have to laugh. You, you can't help but laugh. It's, it's absurd on a different level. And, you know, UNRWA, we've been saying, we as, you know, the, the Israeli government, Israel, we knew this for decades, right? We've been saying it, we've been telling everyone who will listen and no one listened. And, you know, the fact that Hamas uses human shields and fires from within schools and, and, and mosques. We've been saying it for years. No one listened. And now we have, you know, we have hard evidence that it's undeniable. But, you know, I think it's not just UNRWA. I think that that's just a symptom of a much deeper disease. And that deeper disease is the disguise of anti-Semitism uh, in our generation, because in every generation it has a new disguise, a new mask. In our generation, it's anti-Zionism, right? You know, like, you can't be anti-Zionism without being anti-Jewish any more than you could be anti-Jesus without being anti-Christian. Like it, Judaism, you know, is, the core element of Judaism is Zion, right? It's Zionism. And you can't you can't say that the Jewish people don't deserve one ten, tiny little, you know, dot on the map because that's just too much without saying you're anti-Jewish, right? So, you know, UNRWA is just, you know, one symptom of a, of a much deeper, deeper sickness. And, you know, radical Islam and specifically Gaza is, you know, another... I don't know if you want to call it patient or, um, you know, they're a victim, I should say. The innocent people in Gaza are the people that are not supporting uh, Hamas, which sadly is a very, very low percentage. They're, they're real victims of, of radical Islam. And it's, it's, it really is tragic. But, uh, you know, the, the, the Palestinian people elected Hamas. Uh, they knew what they were getting into. We see, you know, thousands and thousands of quote unquote innocent Gazans who took part in October 7th. And even if you want to say that that's anecdotal, they did it, you know, we have polls, right? 90%, or at least close to 90% of, of Gaza is proud of October 7th. So we're talking about a society that's rotten to the core and, and is deeply indoctrinated. And, you know, you know, I know many people take offense to the, the comparison to Nazi Germany, but you can't help but compare it to Nazi Germany. And we know what has to happen. We have to denazify Gaza. That's what has to happen. Anything left than that will just bring another October 7th. And it's not like they're hiding it. They say it loud and clear. We want to do October 7th over and over and over again. So the fact that there's anybody, but literally a single human being in the Western world that is standing with Hamas is preposterous. There's no other way to say it. How could you, with liberal progressive values, stand with an organization that murdered, raped, kidnapped, disfigured? I mean, I don't need to tell you about the atrocities. How could a human being with a conscience and a heart and a mother and father stand with people like that? It boggles the mind.